Thank you for admiring Elizabeth. She is a 1946, quite rare 1946 Chrysler New Yorker, which was Chrysler's very top of the line back in 1946. It was the most expensive Chrysler money could buy. And very rare because this was Chrysler's first post-war year um, for producing uh, automobiles and uh, and Elizabeth underwent a frame off ground up uh, restoration to a very very high standard she has never been exposed to inclement weather there's no rust or crust in it uh, or bondo anywhere uh, the restoration effort was done to a very high level as you can see and it included the exterior the interior the bright work and the mechanics which we'll get to in just a moment. As beautiful as she is, uh, she's an absolute pleasure to drive and garners all the oohs and ahs any time out. When you look down the sides of her, she is as straight as an arrow. And as you can see, during the restoration process, the fenders were removed and the chrome fender welting, not rubber, but chrome fender welting uh, was all removed and installed as well. Sam, Elizabeth's interior cabin is, is exquisite, I think. Uh, you can see the broadcloth wool uh, seating is, is like new. Uh, the dash in it just takes my breath away. It is Art Deco at its very, as, very best with complete instrumentation directly in front of the driver, the deluxe push button radio, the deluxe heater, uh, very rare self-canceling automatic turn signals and electric wipers back in 1946. Was Chrysler well ahead of their time? Uh, absolutely. You know, one of the things I noticed when I first acquired it was a blinking light whenever the ignition was turned on and I couldn't figure out what it was for and then I realized that it was uh, a warning light for the uh, emergency brake being engaged. Uh, the other thing that you may notice is that it does have a very, very rare factory optional spot lamp, which functions very, very well. And Sam, we remember the spotlights. Uh, yeah, there are many uses for that spot lamp. Um, <laughs> we didn't use it. <laughs> I didn't use mine the same way the taxi drivers did <laughs> back in New York, uh, but whenever we found some attractive gals walking down the sidewalk, we would turn the light on them. Yeah, it's perfect. Works great for that. Yes, exactly. You can see some of the New Yorker medallions throughout the car. Um, you know, the door handles, which always catch your knees on the in entry and, ex and exiting the car, are spring-loaded and drop down when not in use. If you look at the vent windows, which it has both in the front and the rear, um, I was wondering where the post was for the vent windows. Well, it's got to be on the window frame. And there it is there right there. And why mount it to the window frame? So that when the window is rolled down, it lends itself to a much cleaner line, which I thought was... Uh, very thoughtful. Yeah, very thoughtful. Um, it does have the uh, fluid drive transmission, which uh, shifts like a well-oiled clock, uh, and we'll see that whenever we, uh, we drive it. Uh, here is an excellent example of suicide doors. The rear cabin area of this New Yorker has three rooms and a bath in it, Sam. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> yes. I, I had one of these in the same color when I was in high school, and we kept a lap robe. Um, strung ar across that, uh, uh, that, that rear seating area uh, to keep the interior nice and clean. But my high school girlfriend and I had quite a time in the back of this. I mean, it is absolutely huge. And look at the, how beautiful the headliner is in it, Sam. It's spotless. It's amazing. And the, the rope pulls for, uh, for allowing easier entry and exit for the rear passengers.
That's like a living room couch back there. Yes, it absolutely is. And of course, the, uh, the armrest will fold up. And this car, this New Yorker, will sit six, seat six comfortably. As we indicated earlier, it has front and rear opening vent windows. So if you open the hood scoop, Sam, mm -hmm. and you're driving down the road, it will give a free flowing breeze throughout the entire car, which is just an absolute pleasure. That was uh, 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 the alternative to factory air conditioning. Well, I think people will be amazed how efficient it is. It really does yes. cool the entire cabin without getting your hair blown away and all that. It works well. In the trunk area, as you can see, uh, you can put, there's enough uh, room for luggage for a family of six. Also a wide white wall spare tire and the original wheel block, which kind of disappears the first time that spare tire is typically used. And as you can see, Sam, the rubber molding around the trunk and the doors and everywhere else, uh, if that looks uh, very fresh, it's only because it is. Beautiful. The bright work, as you can see, is just absolutely uh, beautiful with bumperettes in both the front and the rear and a rear exhaust deflector. I love that middle brake. The middle brake yes. is amazing. AT&T picked up on that for their, uh, for their service trucks in much later years. Heater box. That's the deluxe heater. And the knob you see down below there is the one that opens that front air scoop. And it has a cigar lighter which is unused. And in the glove box we have not a reproduction but the original Chrysler New Yorker owner's manual. Wow. The harmonica grill is absolutely beautiful and very very distinctive and unique to the Chryslers of this era. Um, and in addition to that the Chrysler medallion on the front hood and the beautiful Art Deco styling on the hood medallion. Sam the engine compartment is show quality. Um, this New Yorker has been uh, uh, received uh, numerous awards uh, at various shows and the engine compartment is absolutely breathtaking. Uh, it does have the 323 cubic inch displacement straight eight engine, which was the largest straight eight engine Chrysler made uh, back in the day. Uh, it's 140 horsepower with a 6.8 to one compression ratio, and it will cruise effortlessly at highway speeds and is an absolute pleasure to drive. One of my favorite driving cars. So Norm, this is still 6 volt, is that right? It's a uh, good, uh, good observation. That's the original 6 volt electrical system. And you can drive this car for an hour, shut it off, hit the starter button, and, it, and she, uh, uh, Elizabeth comes right to life. Sam, 
This New Yorker is one of my favorite cars because, number one, it's a walk down memory lane for me. Uh, it brings back so many wonderful memories um, when I was uh, in high school. But even today, it is the ultimate luxury motor car. And you just see so few of them. And of the few that are left, um, there are only a handful, I believe, that have undergone a frame-off restoration uh, that are in this condition. And this is one that can be driven and enjoyed on a daily basis or used on weekends for touring and for shows. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the Art Deco dash, it is Art Deco at its very, very best. All of the uh, controls are, uh, are, are marked beautifully. Uh, look at the chrome. There's no plastic uh, in that dash. It has the deluxe Motorola radio. Again, full instrumentation, the push-button starter, uh, the automatic self-canceling directional signals. And if you even look at the ends of the, uh, uh, of the shift lever and the uh, turn signal lever, and uh, it's all matching down to the cigar lighter. Well, typically, those acrylic ends are yellowed and cracked. I mean, yes. these look fantastic. Yes. It's, uh, the 50,000 uh, miles on it, we believe, are genuine, not based on what's showing on the odometer, but based on the condition of the car. So, starting from a dead stop on a steep grade, you can start in the low gear, which is... which gives you access to first and second. And we, we are in first now, you let off the gas a little and the fluid drive will automatically shift into... No need to touch the clutch. No, no need to touch the clutch at all. Wow, awesome. And then we can shift into pulling it straight down, we're in third now, and then uh, it will shift automatically into overdrive. Uh, it's a pleasure to drive, it is nice and tight, there's not a rattle in the car anywhere. The steering has no play in it whatsoever. The brakes are nice and tight with no play. The front end is nice and tight with no shimmy or shaking and no pulling to either side. And it will run whisper soft at highway speeds. The only challenge we've had taking it out, uh, touring is getting a lot of thumbs up and folks are just getting too close while they're yeah, taking it. I was it. about to mention that. Since <laughs> we've been in this thing, everybody is, hey, oh, great yeah. car. It's beautiful. We're in high gear with two full-size guys, both in pretty good shape, I think. Um, but we're taking this grade in high gear effortlessly. I think that this is the first inline eight that I've been in, and it's amazing. Oh yeah, so, such low-end torque is really special. Now we have the front hood scoop uh, open, so there is a fresh breeze blowing right through the car. We're at a dead stop. As you can see, the electric windshield wipers work perfectly, unlike the old vacuum. Yeah. Wipers on most of, not all of the other cars at this era. Yeah, unless you're accelerating, they really didn't move, did they? No, they didn't. You've got a good memory. Okay, we're starting at a dead stop uh, in third gear. Third gear? It's in third gear. Wow. And it, we're coming up to a steep grade here in third gear. And the beauty of the full instrumentation is it takes all of the guesswork out of what's happening. Great oil pressure, great engine temperature, uh, the charging station uh, is fully functional along with the gas gauge and the ergonomics are just great because everything is right there and directly in front of the driver. Now we've just shifted into high by taking our foot off the gas and so we're in overdrive now 
and we're taking another steep grade in overdrive effortlessly. You know, it runs and drives like a well oiled clock, Sam. It really does. It's, it's so smooth. What a great road trip car this would be. Uh, 